All right, we're gonna be talking about renting to own. So rent to own is basically like a rental agreement. You're just a tenant and you're gonna have an option to buy. So this is called a lease option, really. That's another way to say it. But rent to own is a decent strategy, but not always and not for everyone. So first, let me just talk about why would you want to do a rent to own? And the first and biggest reason is because when you have you know, 8% interest rates, like right now, uh, you may wanna see what other options there are uh, out there. And some rent to own properties will give you a uh, better, uh, a better, you know, interest rate on this. But let's get into it because there's so many different ways to um, formulate a rent to own uh, deal. So I'm gonna talk about the pitfalls. You know, this, this is from the perspective of the buyer or the tenant, really. Um, so, so I'm not gonna, be, not gonna be talking about the perspective of the seller. So here's what's going on. Hey, real quick, I know I'm an agent, but a lot of people like to sell for sale by owner. So if you're interested in learning about a course that can help you sell your property for sale by owner and do everything an agent does, then please click the link below. There's a little place where you can sign up and I'll send you all the information. On a rent to own, you are, you as a tenant are leasing a property and that property is comes with an option to buy and in this option you should have a predetermined price you should not leave that unsaid it shouldn't be fair market value it should be the the price that you set now that could be a good thing and a bad thing um, so what you're doing is you're finding a property you're going to rent it you're going to pay you know let's just use an example okay you're going to get a two bedroom two bath in florida and you're going to pay um two twenty five hundred dollars well as part of the payment that you make it, they're going to bump it up because regular rent value is twenty five hundred you're going to pay probably an additional two hundred dollars per month so now you have a uh you know twenty seven hundred dollar payment but that two hundred dollars is put into a separate escrow account that is used towards your down payment which is really nice because it kind of saves a little bit of your down payment so you got a twenty seven hundred dollar payment 200 of it goes towards an escrow account, which is at risk usually, right? Now, obviously, through contractual agreement, you can, you can make all these different rules. But in a nutshell, in this example, you know, you have $200 every single month going towards uh, a down payment on this house. Let's just say the house is uh, $350,000 that you agreed that you're going to rent until you're ready to buy with a certain term of the lease meaning the term will be let's just say you have 36 months to figure it out to figure out your financing to figure out where you're going to get the money from so now you're going through life renting paying 2700 a month 200 is going towards down payment uh, of your of your uh, when you actually purchase it when you do your financing for it and in the meantime you are basically leasing sometimes the landlord makes puts all the responsibilities on you. So be careful of that. This is one of the pitfalls. Some landlords just treat it like a regular rental and they still maintain the roof, the AC, and all of that stuff. So what can happen, right? What's the good and what's the bad? First thing that can happen is that the, the um, uh, seller, you know, the, the landlord uh, that you're dealing with, um, ends up getting a little greedy. And this is very common. They usually set a higher price on the home than current market value. So that 350 purchase price that you're getting may actually end up being, you know, a, a 335 or 330 um, fair market value. Now, the next part is what's gonna happen in three years, let's say when you're ready. So this, you know, this could go either way. In the last few years, we had a extreme market appreciation. So you would have been just fine. But if the market is um, depreciating, like slowly it is right now, um, and interest rates are going up, so this may speed things up. But since the market is kind of going down and we don't know what the future holds, we might have World War III for all we know, um, there's, uh, there's a possibility that that home's actual value 
is going to be less than the the actual price today which is 335 but you're promising to buy it at 350 so what is what does this mean for you because unless you're buying cash you're going to have to deal with banks and this really matters to banks okay so let's talk about what is an unfortunate uh, probability and this is a big warning sign okay so if we're in a depreciating market and you have promised for a 350 purchase price and let's just say you buy it two and a half years later you're ready to buy it two and a half years later you've saved up your three and a half percent down payment for FHA or your five percent or ten percent for conventional loan or maybe a hundred percent if you're a veteran well what's going to happen is the bank that's going to lend you money is going to appraise it and when they do that they basically say they, you know the banks are here to protect themselves let's be honest they're not here to make the the, the 10 percent off of you or eight percent or whatever the interest rate will be but uh they're they're here to protect their investment that is first and foremost and they're going to say all right well we appraised and since it's been two and a half years uh this thing appraised at 300. So we will lend you, let's just use an example of FHA, we will lend you 96.5% of the current market value of 300000 So what happens to the difference? You know, you do need your 3.5% down payment on 300000 which is, uh, what, uh, $10,500 as your down payment. But what about the difference? Who pays for the, for the difference between three hundred dollars and three fifty? dollars And the answer is you. So now you're like, hey, seller, I can't buy this. This thing's only worth 300. And he said, look, we agreed. We agreed to 350. What do you want to do? And you're going to say, well, I'd like my $200 a month that I was paying back and, um, and I'll move out. And I don't need to pay 2,500 to rent this place and I'll cut my losses. And depending on what the actual agreement says, he, he may, you may have that right to get your money back or you may not you may have an automatic extension where he, if you can't buy it within the first three years then you know there's some sort of little penalty for you uh and uh and uh, you, you you have to you know you get another two years or three years to buy it and then you can kind of roll the dice where maybe it'll go up in value uh in those next three years maybe not you know, you never know with the market, right? So, um, so there is a risk that that $200 per month that you're paying extra, you're not going to see ever again. Because your agreement might also say that that extra money that you're putting down towards your down payment, if you fail to close, maybe it's split 50-50 with the seller. I don't know. Maybe the seller gets all of it. Maybe you get all of it if you negotiated very well. That's what you'll end up getting, you know? So your, your extra $200 is at risk, usually. And then in order to release it, you know, we need to have everyone sign off on it. So just saying, when you do your agreement, try to get an agent involved, try to get a lawyer involved, um, get the right lawyer for a flat fee, not for, you know, m m uh, hourly charges, okay? Uh, there's plenty of lawyers out there that'll do an agreement like this for five hundred to a thousand dollars, at least in Florida. So, so now what uh, what other pitfalls are there? Well, another one. Let's just let's just assume that the price did not change, that the price is still three thirty-five when you're ready to buy. Well, what if interest rates at that point in time went from eight percent, which is what you were calculating that you can afford, and your lender said, yeah. As long as we get this credit score fixed, uh, you know, we can lend you 96.5% um, of the purchase price uh, for your FHA loan. But then interest rates go up and all of a sudden you don't qualify for the FHA loan uh, at the 335 or 350 purchase price or whatever. Uh, you only qualify, you know, for, for a 320 uh, purchase price. Well, once again, they're only going to lend you based on the appraised amount, okay? So when they when it appraises lower, um, you, someone needs to cover the difference. And then when your debt-to-income ratio doesn't cover it, 
you get a loan denial, you can't get that loan. Even if it appraises at 365, okay, they're still only lending based on the appraisal or purchase price, whichever is lower. So they're gonna lend on 350. And now the question is, do you have the proper debt to income ratio? DTI, look into this. Very important to understand how DTI works. If you're not a math person, download some spreadsheet. Come on, just do the research before you go and just blindly purchase a property. It's most people's largest investment that they make in their life. So uh, it's important, in my opinion, you know, if you're gonna buy a, a, a jet or an airplane, you wanna research all that, right? Well, no different on your home, okay? Whether it's your home or your investment property. So what other pitfalls can happen? Um, another pitfall that can happen is that at the time of purchasing it, you end up having problems with the property. For example, the roof it ends up being 22 years old because it took you four years to buy it, okay? Well, in Florida, it's really difficult to find an insurance company that's going to underwrite insurance with a 22-year-old roof. There's only citizens, I think. I think that's the only option you have. So, so there could be other things like leaks happening under sinks or maybe, um, maybe some... Uh, electrical situations where you have aluminum strand wiring going to your stove where once again you can't insure that you can't get insurance on it so if you can't get insurance you can't get a loan not a federally regulated Fannie Mae Freddie Mac type of loan or FHA or VA right so that's another pitfall that could happen is that the condition of the property, although it's great, you've lived there, you know it's fine, everything works. It doesn't matter if everything works. What matters is what are the underwriting guidelines for insurance companies for them to issue you a policy. <laughs> so, so, you know, there are things that you don't know and this is where getting an agent involved is really good because a good agent will be able to you know, foresee some of the problems uh, in this situation. And I, I do recommend that before you get into a four point, I'm sorry, get into a lease option, that maybe you ask the seller to provide a four point and a win mitigation report. And they're gonna spend $300 on that, $250. And that's gonna allow you to go shop the insurance rate to see if it's uh, insurable, at least on that day. You know and those reports are usually good for about two years so you'll be able to use it in the future uh, for for whenever you actually do decide to uh, close on the property how you doing hey, hey, hey. okay so one of the benefits that you can gain from a lease option is a market appreciation situation because you're locking in the price on a particular date and then you have a future time frame to purchase it at that price and figure out your financing and or come up with the cash. So the people that got into lease options, you know, in 2018 and 17, um, or even at the very beginning of 2020, ended up really um, being in an advantageous position. So what happens is you, you are usually paying a consideration for the option to purchase it at that purchase price. And in this example I gave was $200 a month. And if the market appreciates significantly, you have the contract that you can purchase that home for 350 but the market might go up to 400 and if you go back to looking at 2020 you know april and may of 2020 going all the way to um the january february 2022 the market appreciated a good 50 percent so that home that was 350 is now worth you know 510 or something i mean it really depends situationally but that home is worth a lot more. And you've been renting that home, but you have the option to buy it. And now, as if you made your contract assignable, it's even better because maybe you aren't ready to actually go through the financing and finance the property. Like the banks won't qualify you just yet. However, you might be able to assign the contract if you made it assignable. And what that basically means is that you find someone else, another real estate investor, let's just say it went from 350 to 510, 
and you're coming up on the time frame of needing to close on it, your option uh, time frame. Well, once that option time frame, you know, is getting closer, you need to take some action. You need to extend the time frame or you need to close on it. And if you can't close on it, you go find another real estate investor and you say, hey, or another buyer, and you say, hey, look, I got the option to buy this property. I'll sell you this option for, let's just say, um, you know, uh, $20,000. So now you get $20,000 and uh, they're able to buy it at the price of 350 or maybe you get a hundred thousand and you know they get it for 450 basically you know so there are some options out there on what you can do um, to figure it out even if you can't purchase it yourself and once again this is why you need to have a good relationship with uh, an agent someone who knows the the market and knows how to be strategic in these you know in these um financing creative financing types of uh, situations. Now, um, what else can happen in one of these things? So another common thing, and this is a predatory type of situation, but I've seen it many times, okay? And I've never, I would never suggest that you as a buyer go into one of these uh, deals. So someone will say, hey, I got this property. Let's just say it's worth, I don't know, uh, 300. And it's a three bedroom, two bath, no pool, $300,000. And they say, hey, listen, I'm willing to sell it for 275 rent to own. And you have to have a two year lease with me first. And, um, and there's no extra money that you pay monthly. You just have a two year lease, $2,500. But you need to pay me a $15,000 upfront consideration. And this is basically you're purchasing the right to have your lease option. So now you're paying $15,000 out of pocket and you end up paying $2,500 a month to lease it and you have to lease it for 24 months um, from that seller and then you have to close. Now I don't like these. First thing I don't like is the $15,000 consideration because this is money that you're putting at risk and what risk can happen? Well, just what I mentioned, interest rates went up, you no longer qualify. The condition of the property, this is actually the, the bigger problem, condition of the property is not insurable. Therefore, you can't actually purchase it because you can't get insurance on it without making major repairs. And unless the property is appreciated a lot, it's not worth doing that. But also, you, as a tenant, you're not allowed to make major improvements in a property without written approval. So now you go make the, the, the improvement the seller says, uh oh, he's gonna actually buy it at this price. I don't wanna sell it to him at this price. I was just trying to seize the $15,000. And what happens is you end up you know, losing your money because he evicts you for, for making major improvements without authorization. It's unbelievable, but there are predatory people that use lease option as a strategic way to get, you know, 15,000 here, 30,000 there from people. And they just pull that money out. And now that money, that $15,000 might be able to be used towards your down payment. If you play your cards right, or if you're just dealing with an honest person, um, you might be able to play your cards right and get it done where you're actually getting to buy the house at the predetermined price with your with nothing being seized and you rent for two years first while you fix your credit or get a better job or whatever your situation is. So, um, you know, one of the things that I'll just add and then we'll finish this up is that when it comes to purchasing a property before you get into a lease option, you should really talk to an agent because bef before you do that, you're going to see what the alternative is. And if you've talked to an agent and the agent says, no, nah, it's not doable, sorry, you can't qualify, and they drop you, which is very common, by the way. People don't want to work with clients who are just wasting their time. Uh, they're not even clients, they're just like people who can't buy. So um, what I would recommend is find another agent and then find another one. Just find someone who's gonna be 
like me, up front, tell you what's up, put a plan in action for you so that you can buy. Sometimes that plan in action um, is, is um, here, let, actually, let me give you an example. I have a couple once a month, we're following up. All, all it is is this, they have poor credit. So they can't buy, they have jobs. So they just can't buy because of poor credit. They're gonna be FHA, three and a half percent down with gifts from uh, both sides of the, of the parents, right? So, so, so the, the wife's side is gonna contribute for a down payment and the husband's side is gonna to contribute to the down payment and the parents are basically fronting the down payment. But they still can't buy because they don't have the credit. So in order to make this happen for them, instead of sticking them in a lease option, which is not a good idea, and I can still get paid on that, but I just, I just don't like it, okay? Um, what, I'm, what we're doing is we made a plan. We sat down, we looked at their credit karma, we saw what are the problems in their credit report and how do we fix them. And we made a plan of action and we have a check-in every 30 days, once a month, we check in and we say, boom, uh, this is just a five minute phone call. First of all, uh, did you say what you, did you do what you said you were gonna do this last month? You know, let's say pay down this one credit card by $200. Yes, we did. Great, what are you gonna do next month? Bam, we're gonna pay it down 225. Great. Let's keep moving forward. I'll talk to you next month. And it's an accountability plan. An accountability partner basically is what I'm doing to get them to be able to buy a home. And that's a lot better of an option, even if they're renting, you know, in the meantime, than getting a lease option where they might really be, they will be overpaying for the, um, the rental, uh, first of all. And second of all, we're in a declining market. Where the, where the prices are going down, um, you know, very slowly, but they are going down in our uh, local real estate market. So I recommend you talk to an agent. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. My number is 941-888-SOLD. This is Florida Real Estate TV, and uh, you can do some searches on my website, sarasota.com. Sarasota Thanks, guys.